Well, it's, it's a pretty fascinating story. Um, I opened the hotel, the Column d'Or, in uh, 1980 and thought it was pretty old. It was built in 1923 and it belonged to uh, Mr. Fondren. It was Mr. Fondren's home. And I had purchased it from the grandchildren and decided to do a small little hotel. Uh, we opened in 80 and in the early 90s, uh, it, it, it was kind of obvious that we needed a ballroom. We needed some kind of area to do a lot of weddings. The place was doing, and so I decided I was gonna build a ballroom. Well, I was very good friends with uh, Mr. Meekham. Uh, and uh, we were having lunch one day, and I said, well, I'm going to build a ballroom. And he said, what kind of ballroom are you going to build? I said, what do you mean, what kind of ballroom? If you go to Pittsburgh, you go to Kansas City, you go to a hotel, they have a ballroom. And I'm going to build a ballroom. He said, well, you know, there's, there's some old ballroom down in the, the old Air Force blimp base, uh, and uh, you might be able to put it back together again. Why don't you see if it's something you might be able to use? Well, it turned out that Mr. Meekham's father after the war, after World War II, had gone over to Europe and he was quite wealthy and he knew a lot of the people that had lost money over the war years and he literally started buying things back and shipping them back and storing them in the old Air Force blimp base and he purchased the entire salon and woodwork and chandeliers from a grand ballroom that belonged to one of the Montesquieu's and uh, it turned out that this particular room had been in storage from the early 60s. Uh, I became sort of fascinated with the, the, the idea of maybe being able to, to resurrect and redo um, the, the, this old ballroom. And so I kind of got possessed with it a little bit. And, and uh, of course, we do, all, all Mr. Beacon knew was that it belonged to some countess or some princess or something like that. And, uh, and it was all painted green because back in the old years, uh, in France, if you were wealthy, you could afford paint. And so all of the woodwork that you see and all the woodwork in the room was painted this gris de Versailles. And it was all stacked up like kindling wood and just kind of, you know, stacked in a corner. But I had, uh, uh, it was very interesting, I had met some carpenters who were the grandson of the carpenters that worked on the old Warwick Hotel when Mr. Meekham actually did the Warwick in the early 60s. And he said that he, he remembered this room and he felt that he could, he could put it back together again. So that sort of, sort of started the odyssey of could I buy it, could it be put back together again, and then actually what was it? Because all the records were destroyed. Uh, Mr. Meekham kind of got it out of France, called it French bric-a-brac, and uh, basically it was in, in storage and the records were all destroyed. Well, I had been a professor many years ago at University of St. Thomas, and one of my dear friends was a librarian, and he had always said, you know, that in life, people always need a librarian. And I told him, I said, Bill, when I got out of law school, and that was it, I'd never again need a librarian. I'd be lucky if I read law books. Well, sure enough, when we started looking at this paneling, on the back was the name Grafuel. So I called Bill in Rome, and I said, Bill, I need a librarian. And I've got the name of this woman who owned this room at one point in the 1800s. Can you research it? Well, he went to the Vatican Libraries and then to the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, and sure enough, found the great-granddaughter of the Countess and started signing some of the relatives that were still alive. And it became this absolutely fascinating kind of odyssey and problem-solving deal to figure out about the room. Well, I went over and it turned out that the room was purchased uh, in the 1800s uh, and in fact, we have a, a newspaper article from 1891 talking about this room being purchased by the Comtesse Grafuel. She was the first cousin of Edward VII, and she purchased this and was going to add it to one of the chateaus that they own near Fontainebleau. And one of the great stories was that Edward VII and Alexandra were having dinner with the Count and the Countess and a sculptor by the name of Rodin. And, uh, Edward said, you know, Elizabeth, we have to have a party pretty soon. Cousin Willie is going to start some trouble. Well, Cousin Willie was Kaiser Wilhelm. And sure enough, they ended up giving this great ball, which turned out to be the last great ball of European royalty before World War I. You'll see on the columns here uh, that we have in the front names of all of the people we can prove that were in this room in the 1800s and early 1900s. And Caruso sang in this room. Uh, 
Tsar Nicholas, as I said, was in the room, Marconi, Pasteur, Curie. So it turned out to be an incredibly famous room. The original origin actually goes way back, maybe 150 years actually before the Countess, because it was carved between 1715 and 1730. We've had President Clinton here when he was president. We've had, uh, we've had Bishop Tutu. We've had five Nobel Prize winners. We've had President Bush, uh, the first President Bush here. Uh, we've had Judge Rehnquist from the Supreme Court. Uh, just on and on and on here. And the New York Times, when we first opened, said, you're just not going to believe what's in Houston, Texas. You don't think about finding a, a, a salon in a room that's actually, this room is 150 years older than our country.